everyone, an Athena Artiste here with my first look at the new Megabod, which is now in beta. Uh, I've been trying to do this for a while, and I've been having a number of tech issues and other issues. So let's start with tech issues as quickly as I can at first. Well, I had already posted on my blog, or my journal, whichever one it is you want to call it, posts about uh, performance issues in Banished. Well, it turned out it was much more pervasive than I thought at first, and it involved the Microsoft Windows 10 Anniversary Update. And the best advice that I was given was to simply remove the Steam client, which of course would then remove all of my installed games, including Banished, of course, and then reinstall everything. And yes, that did improve things dramatically. So I am passing that along for anyone who may be experiencing really strange issues with their games, such as I was. This is this is the recommendation that is made on Steam and so far as a good fix. Now with that said, doing this mod, well let's start out with what this mod is. It is a conglomeration put together by Mr. K of the Black Liquid team, those that are behind Colonial Charter. And this is in beta, as I said, it has the alpha version of Colonial Charter 1.7 in it. So this is, what I'm showing you here may not be all of the ones that are gonna be in there. There's over 80 in here now. And I'm not sure if some of the things I'm seeing here, if they're going to be here or what, you know, it's really unclear to me at this time. But let me scroll down slowly here through this list so you can get an idea. And yes, he has color-coded things somewhat for us, but this is a work in progress, as I've heard, because the one thing I noticed that I didn't care for, which when I get down here to the bottom of the list, you could see where there's this yellow type, which is really hard to read. But I've already noticed uh, from his post that he is supposed to be fixing or improving on these things, so we'll have to see where that goes. So, with all that said, the other thing I, because I have tried to do this, as I said, a few times, and I think what I'm going to be doing, you'll be hearing me taking screenshots through the Steam client, so that when I do the post-edit work, I can insert the what the resources are for a particular building type. Oh, yes, I should mention that, too. The Megabot is all about building options. It isn't going to affect your climate beyond what you set for your startup game. It isn't going to affect aging of the population or how much they can carry about with them. It isn't going to change how much fish, for example, are gathered through your fisheries or any of those sort of things. There are plenty of mods out there that do do those sort of changes. I have tested a few. When you check the description, you'll see a list of the ones that I know are will, will, will work just fine with it. And a word of caution about the one that I wasn't too sure if it is an issue or not. But as I said, with this all being so early on, it's hard to tell if something is going to conflict with a Megabot or not. So we'll just have to see how things go. So, as you can see, he did color code some of this. This is where all our building types are at, along with our lodging, road types, bridges, and even this Juju Bod, which I have not had time to explore. And barns, and markets, and trade options. Well, it goes on and on. So let's get down into looking at a few of the things that I thought would be of interest because, well, I know one of the things that I always look for is what sort of options can I do fairly early on 
my concern is all about resources. What what can I have that can I can build fairly early on? And one answer is clearly these colonial small houses, which I believe are from Kid. That's down here. Let me grab a screenshot on that. And there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, there's a whole bunch of them right in here. This isn't one. But you can see they come in a number of looks and styles. They're very tiny. They don't take up much real estate. And I was really impressed with that. Over here, we spin it around so we can see the front side of this one. This is called a one of the farmhouses, which is down here. And that one, again, quite light on resource usage, but it does have a larger real estate insofar as what it covers on the ground. So, again, now some of these will require iron as well, and some are upgradable. So, again, these are all matters that will have to be taken into consideration. This is a row house, and this one is located over here. This one, I don't know if you'd want to build these right off early, because they do use quite a bit of stone, but they do... They are really nice for uh, later on when you have a good source of stone available to you because they will hold six and quite a bit, bit amount of storage. And they do, like I said, they kind of link together. There are two different roofing styles on those. So you'll probably want to make sure that they match up when you're putting them in. And yes, one of them has uh, this little, I think it's called a gable or something. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not an engineer or builder by any X means. Someone could tell me in the comments what that little thing that pokes out like that is called. Now this is one of Red Ketchup's Little Houses, which is over in here. Now, let me take a screenshot on that. This is, again, quite light on resources and in sp so far as space um, now again not all of these it i really don't know what they are in so far as comparison on warmth you know in so far as the scale of compared to wooden houses and our stone houses that we get in regular banished but uh i suspect that most of these that i've shown well other than these up here uh, probably these are probably about the level of the warmth that you have with uh, your wood, your wooden houses, or maybe even your salt box houses, such as down in here. Now, the resources on the salt box house, I don't think those have changed any, and I'm not sure if this is an updated look or not, because I haven't built these for a while in some of my games, so, but I really do love how they're looking. That's what I mean, we have so many options now, it's just so hard to figure out what to do. Uh, let's see, and I apologize for saying oh, a lot. My English teacher would be very unhappy with me. Okay, let's find some other housing types. Let's see. Okay, well, over here, these are called Boston Houses. They are right here. And those use just wood to build. They are fairly large, as you can see. And yes, they're quite tall, so I would suspect if you're putting them across the street from each other, you might want to put in couple of road spaces there between them so you know you can see between them better more row houses back here this is another one of I think this is my clinic no that is a first level residence that's a red ketchup one those have been around for a while so I'm not sure if 
Well, they are over in here. If anyone isn't sure what those take, and so far as resources. Now, wasn't there? Yeah, over here. These are called the Colonial Large Houses, which are over in here. And so these, again, are very light on resources, but they are much larger, so I would assume that these would be warmer than the Colonial Small Houses and carry probably a larger inventory space. And yes, there's a fair number of colors and looks to those. Maybe not as much as you get with the small ones, but still quite a few. So let's move on to the topic. I think that's all I'm going to do on the houses. Let's do some real quick ones on lodging or hotels, whatever it is you want to call it. This one, for those of you who have not seen it, is Red Ketchup's Medieval Postal, as it's called, which is over here. Screenshot that. And yes, as you can see, these could be upgraded to slightly different looks. I don't know. That's one thing I'm not sure with some of these medieval ones. If upgrading them increases, like for example, how many people can fit in here. Or like if, you know, the bakery, if it gives you different options. I really don't know enough about it to be sure. So... I don't know. And here is another one that I built. This is just simply called, where is it? The Lodging House. And let me get a screenshot of that one. Yes, I guess it only comes in the one color, but still, it's not very bad on resources, so that might be one that someone wants to put in early game. So that if there's a fire or something, people can have some place to go. Now, I think that's enough. I know there's a lot of other things here I didn't get into, such as the Norwegian houses and, uh, where is it? The Nordic houses and so forth. But I'm, I really just am not going to have time to cover everything. So let's move on to roads. And I'm not going to say too much on this, because I haven't had time to explore the Choo Choo one, which is the one I've really been trying to get into doing but um, now in so far as the regular roads your two dirt road types these continue to be uh, this one is the what is it called the the country road where the fallen leaves these two seem to be the only dirt road types that I could see for sure under snow I haven't finished exploring with all of these other options that are out there because for example like here's all kinds of other dirt roads and things with patterns now i did try for them this is the colorful roads there's a lot of things i still have yet to experiment with but i did put a little bit of this one it's called a mixed road which this is the pattern here that I chose to put in. And let me zoom in down here next to this brick bridge so you can see what that looks like. These do look really interesting on the ground. And so, I, like I said, there's a lot of exciting opportunities here. What I think for someone like me that plays with the harsh environment and so forth, what I could do is put a border on them that would be either the dirt or the country road type and then put something like this in the middle of it. And that way I could have the prettiness of these kind of things but still be able to tell where my road is. Okay, so that's enough on roads. Let's move on to barns now. Oh goodness, now barns again. Lots and lots of options for barns. Oh, and there's the quay houses. Uh, I think everyone knows what those are for it so far as resources, so I'm not going to even get into those. Okay, here we have a bunch of these barn storage ones, which
which are right in here. I don't remember which one it was of these two that I use. They are pretty much the same. Most of the time it seems like they have this red silo part to them. Now the vegetable barn that goes with it usually has this wooden silo with it. So that's that and that's that. Of course this is your regular dry sto good storage. Now this one is the medieval grain silo which is over here next to my water mill which is grinding my oats to make flour and let's see this one is in the medieval barn area where's the medieval barns there we go so no, that's the coal one i think is that it no that's the granary it's that one there like i said it's so many options it's hard to get them all sorted out. This one is the coal one, though, over here. Right here. Which I've been very impressed with. Because this one... Well, apparently you could put other types of fuel and things in there. And I think that's a lot more attractive than having all these piles of stuff laying around. But, okay, now let's move on into... Well, markets, I don't know if I have too much to say. I know there's a lot of different kinds of markets included in here, but I just, again, have not had time to experiment with all of these yet, other than one which I did put up in here with my forest, first forest area. This is called the Tiny Market, and that one is oh that's the small town market that's the tiny market right there so again i haven't had much time to experiment with all oh though except for the general store i'm sorry i did put that one in because that was just sounded rather intriguing and it certainly is that right here is the general store and that is right there so I really am impressed with how that one looks. There's a farm stand here, which, again, like I said, there's just so many options here of what you can do. It's, and this is another one, another kind of farm stand. And it looks like those ones you see on the road and stuff, even today. So lots of things to experiment with, even yet. Now, under trading, again, there's lots of options here, which I just simply have not had time to get into at all. Well, there's a tequila trader, which I have no idea what that is. I guess that needs to go on the water. Yeah, I guess it does. Okay. So that must be going to bring me tequila. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. Like I said, every time I get into this, I find something new, so... Now let's start over in here under the town services area, and again, I have simply not had time to explore everything. Under civic buildings, there's all kinds of options for different town hall types, a gazebo... Now, this is the Nordic well over here screenshot of that and then move over here because here it is this is the Nordic well the Nomad well I'm sorry I'm getting very confused once a year you will get usually a small number of nomads that will come into your town and every year thereafter at about roughly the same time of year, you'll get them again. And unfortunately, this, this particular one does not seem to be linked to this option here under our town arrival. Now, I don't know if that is something... I assume that's probably by design, because as I said, this does work differently than things like the town hall and all that. 
So whenever you see this pop-up that says no bads have come in, you have to click on that and come over here to that to decide whether you're going to accept them or deny them. So let's move on to the topic of school buildings. Well, I didn't get too wild with experimenting with these, although there's a lot of interesting options. There's, for example, there's a village school. Some of these, like this one only takes 12 children. The one that I started using quite a bit was this one, which is called the Freestanding School. And that looks like that, which is quite nice. It kind of matches with those row houses and everything that Kid did, too. I think that's all by Kid. And uh, let's see, where is... Over here is the university. Now, I'm not sure who did, or rather the college. I'm not sure who did the college. If that's a red ketchup one, I have to go look. But that one, again, now this one, Unfortunately, you can't put just one teacher in there. You'll always have to put three teachers in there. And so, but it will hold up to 60 students. Let me just go look here real quick to see if the college, yes, the college is from Red Ketchup. Very good. Now that's all the time I've had to put in for the schools to test with, although I have looked at a few other ones, but that's the ones that sort of caught my eye and I kind of stuck with them. There's this one, which is called a sacred word. Let me bring it over here to where you can see it a little better. It looks like sort of like an altar with a tree stump or something like that there behind it. And it only holds, I assume, it doesn't say how many children it would educate, but I would assume it would be a fairly small number. But like I said, you have all kinds of options all over the place. Now under worship, I have not gotten into a lot of these other ones. But for example, we have a druid circle, which you could put in someplace. You've got parish churches which I think you get... No, I guess you only get the one option for that one. And a colonial church, which I guess you only get the one option on that. And then a small town chapel, which I guess is only in one style. And then there's this one, which... Well, <laughs> really grand looking. And I guess that only comes in one style. Now, this is what's called a central church. Now, yes, that one apparently does have quite a few different styles. Now, that's a mini chapel. Boy, oh boy, look how tiny that is. And, of course, you have your regular chapel, which, again, is... That's definitely Colonial Charter. I can recognize that one. And parish house, a couple of different forms of that. I haven't had time, again, to explore with all of this. Under health options, again, this is where your, your various clinics will be, as well as a dentist and a barber from Red Ketchup under his medieval airy things, your herbalists, and of course your apothecaries. So, a lot of different options, again, with that. I'm not going to get into other than saying, well, this is the, where is it, the Freestanding Health Center, as it's called. No, that's my resource depot, sorry. Oh, uh, where is, there it is, right there. There's the health center, which is this one. So, I think that's enough on that topic. Now, under the food category, Boy, oh boy, I'm just not sure where to where to start or even end with this one. So, well, the one thing I did notice when I was setting things up 
is that yes for example all your raw food gathering for the most part is down over here now which is where the forest outposts the ones that I like so much the little tiny ones these here the gatherers and the hunters and so forth now the uh, the herbalist is over there under the health ones under town services now but the one thing that intrigued me when I first opened this up was this new foods gatherer, which talked about gathering rose hips and oats. Well, when I first tried it, I wasn't getting anything, and I realized what I had to do was put in a standard forester type. And then I would get them, but they do come, they can, those can be picked up by your regular gatherer. And then this includes flax as well as your rose hips and so forth. So I'll get into what you can do with a flax in just a moment, but just do remember you need to build that regular forester type. Now let's see, there's also one that's simply a flax gatherer. Again, I assume that has to go where either you have a, they, they, there are regular tree types. So these, of course, are the renewable resources pods. Those are, of course, in here, which are some of my favorites. Now this one over here is called the Wild Things Forester. Now this one is found over under theme sets and here, right there. Now, if you've ever played on the Wild Things map that's in Colonial Charter 1.61, I mean, you get all kinds of crazy things that are growing up in there. But you don't get any of the animals with this, but you do get all the plants. For example, now my, now my hunter, see, they're just gathering the usual sort of things, most for the most part, that they usually get. But the gatherer, now look at this. They have gotten some chilies, some peas, some squash, so on and so forth, that you would ordinarily have to plant someplace. But because this is the wild things forester, I guess we get them. Now this one has got raspberry, blackberries, bamboo, lettuce, all kinds of interesting stuff in there. You know, not much, but a little bit here and there and stuff, so... Now, the other one that's over here under this is his... I... Again, I'm not sh These are things I've not seen before, so I'm not sure how these work. Like, for example, this would be an orange forester. Now, yes, it looks like your traditional forester building, but I... As I look at it, it says that it, you define an area to selectively cut down trees and then plant new seedlings, which in this case would be orange trees. Now, does that mean that they harvest the orange trees? Or do you gatherers do that? I'm not clear about that at all. So, if they harvest the oranges, that would be really kind of neat, because then you wouldn't have to buy the orange seeds. So, in any case, let's move on. Let's see, we were going through food sources and that. Let's go on to just a little bit. I haven't, again, I haven't had time to get into all these things, like all the tinneries and canneries and preserving of food options. Over here by where my general store is, I did build one of the... Let's see, they're called it's the Medieval Bakery, right there. And this one, according to the description, it says it both makes cakes and pies, but I didn't see pies listed in here. Now, it says it can be upgraded, so I'm not sure. Maybe it has to be upgraded to make the pies? I don't know. So like I said, I these are also... I'm just in the process of learning these, but they're all quite exciting. 
we could put in <laughs> a ketchup one to make today tomatoes and generate ketchup which wow a ketchup factory <laughs> and I suspect very strongly that's from red ketchup <laughs> Like I said, the more I look at this stuff, the more I see. I, it's just so much fun. Uh, yes, there's so many other things in here which I haven't had time to touch on, but you get the idea. And we went into resources just a little bit with the foresters. Let's take a look at some of the... I haven't had time to build too many of them. We'll just go through here. For example, now you could build a jade quarry. And a marble quarry. There's a tunnel mine. Now that one looks like it's purple. So I don't think that's from Mr. Red Ketchup. That might be from someone else. Now that's a medieval salt mine. That's definitely a red ketchup one. There's these over here, which is a tiny mine. Now do remember, though, those are going to produce unhappiness. So you'll have to... And yes, the unhappiness and happiness mods are included in this, so that'll be a tremendous help in sorting out where you want to put things. So, now the other thing that's over here is this greenhouse. Now this one kind of stumped me for a while. No, I haven't built it, but from what I understand, this one, from what it says, let me snapshot that. It will grow the seedlings which you need. For example, if you look over here under flowers, there's daffodils there, which has that little green symbol there. Let me snapshot that. And I think that that little green symbol there, that's what the seedlings are that they're talking about. That you're going to need those seedlings to plant some of these other ones. Now, I don't know if you need to have it... For example, that's a toadstool. You have to have a mushroom to plant that one. Now, the other thing I noticed when I was trying that out was that the planter bases... Some of these things apparently cannot go inside the planter bases. Like, but like I said, this is all a work in progress, so I'm not sure if they're still working on that or what's the deal there with that. Because I used to be able to put things like flowers and that into the planter bases. So, any case. Uh, let's see, there was something else. Oh! <laughs> Tailors and blacksmiths. Well, okay, let's start over here with the first two that I built in so far as tailors, because they're right here. This is called the clothes store. Now, remember me talking about how you're getting all this flax up here from your gatherers now. Well, the clothes store, and that is located over here, right there. Let's screenshot that. And this one could take that raw flax and turn it into something called linen clothes. Now, they don't have a very high trade value. I think it's like eight coins, but considering that you're going to be getting all kinds of flax, depending upon your climate and so forth up in here, from your gatherers, it is a wonderful way to make sure everybody has clothes early on in the game. And this one is called the Small Town Tailor, which is right next to it. Let me screenshot that one. And this one can make a lot of the early sort of games it's that that you, uh, clothing that you want so again even start at the game you have options now up here I have put in three of these medieval tailors let me screenshot that now look at all the clothing types they can make I think that's pretty much everything that you could think of that you might want them to make. And it can be upgraded. Now, I don't know if the... Up I assume it, with you upgraded, it would mean that you would just be able to put more tailors to work there. But as you can see, you, I mean, you can make high coats from even cotton and so forth. 
it's just it's just incredible uh, let's move on to blacksmiths now I only put in I had some other ones I was trying out which I actually took out so I've only got really one that's in here still to show you because now blacksmiths are over in here and it's this one, the small town blacksmith, which as you can see takes very little resources. And that's right here. And look at all the different tool types that they can make. And right now, yes, I have them making me carbon steel tools. Now they can even make something called gemstone tools from polished gemstones. And those have a very high trade value 200 some coins if I'm not mistaken I would <laughs> I don't know if I'd want my people running around with tools that valuable I think I would prefer to use those as a trade item but again it might be hard to get them all into a trader and not have people grab them up because I guess they would last well probably forever at that time I guess you got a hardware store you got a few other options and stuff for doing even your smelting and so forth. Definitely with your brick making and under artisans you've got a pottery shop. Like I said, there's all kinds of stuff to explore in here. There's an agave masher. I am not sure what agave is or why I would want to mash it. If someone knows, please do tell me. That one, I really don't know what Agave is. So, <laughs> is it something you grow? Is it something you dig up? I don't know. Um, or why I'd want to mash it. Um, again, under luxuries, I have not gotten into this at all, but there's all kinds of different options here. From your White Sock Swan, which is your local tavern and so forth. And now the dock stuff is still over here under theme set along with a few other things, but that's it. I really have got to stop at this point because this is, it's getting to be, there's just, like for example, now here you can go get into building your own canal. And this one you can put a billboard up. I don't know if you could choose what kind of sign goes on there. I think you just have a few choices they, they give you. But anyway, like I said, this is so huge. Oh, and I forgot about this one. The Tropical Greenhouse, which is over here under the raw f uh, food gathering over here at the end. Let me snapshot that one. This one... I guess it's been around a while, but this is the first time I had found out about it. What the, this one does is it takes all that bone meal that you get from whenever, uh, for example, when your hunter kills a deer, you'll get a little bit of bone meal. Not much, but a little bit. You'll get more when you start slaughtering your animals from your, or, uh, your pastures and that. But anyway, they take that and use it as fertilizer and turn it into all of these different fruits and a few vegetables that you can only buy, most of these that you can only buy through the trader. So right now I've got them making me bananas. And they don't do a bad job. See, they're making me about 150 or so every year. So not too bad for something that you know, you don't have much use for otherwise. So, but that is going to be it. Now, and so far as doing the let's play with this, I'm considering it, but I'm not really ready to commit to it just yet because, well, with everything going on, I'm, I'm not sure how close this is to the final version because it takes me a while to do a let's play as everyone knows so I could do one but then what sort of one should I do this one is a sand lake and let me show you this map size for this because I went with this because it had about a 50 50 ratio between the water areas and the land areas 
so I had a nice balance on those but if you want me to do something like my my water world series or something like this with the farming and everything what sort of startup conditions would you like me to do then by all means let me know and I can take off with it and we'll see where things go but that would be running separate from the water world series again and well anyway voice your opinion down in the comments and let me know what you think and I do appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in, in whatever the next time you want to watch one of my videos bye for now